Hey, welcome back to another Celebrate Truth video. I'm Robbie Davidson, and we got a good one for you today. We got an article, Carl Sagan, How Ancient Greeks Figured Out the Earth Isn't Flat Over 2,000 Years Ago. All right, let's get into this article, shall we? The denial of science has entered the highest levels of government. And no matter what the data says, the U.S. promises to cease all efforts to curtail or even study climate change. Oh, heaven forbid, heaven forbid they don't look into that hoax and pour all this taxpayer money into the carbon tax. Everyone on the planet must pay their dues because the planet is going to blow up if we don't all act and get in accord with Mother Earth because she needs to be protected at all cost. Sounds pretty culty to me. But anyways, this is the thing, right? So we have a new administration. They're not going along with climate change. So, hey, that's one that we can kind of cheer on. But uh, again, isn't it interesting? Anytime flat earth is brought up, they instantly move to climate change and vaccinations. And again, I've talked about that in a lot of previous videos. Check out some other videos and you'll see. But there's definitely a common trend happening, common denominator with all these articles. You know, science denial is dangerous and it will affect the planet if we don't act. What are we going to do? All these articles write. Let's continue on and see. So astrophysicist Katie Mack calls this retrenchment a form of data nihilism. Ooh, there's a new one. Writing in an exasperated tweet, what is science? How can a thing be known? Is anything even real? Indeed. What can we expect next from the Isaac Asimov called the United States anti-intellectual cult of ignorance, a flat earth lobby? Hmm. Shall we go there? Well, at least a couple celebrity figures have come out as flat earthers, perhaps the vanguard of anti-round earth movement. First, Cleveland Cavaliers guard Kyrie Irving made the claim on a podcast insisting. Chris writes that we were being lied to about such basic things by the global elites. Then they go into Shaquille O'Neal and obviously he's gone back and said it was all a joke. But again, we got Kyrie Irving talking about looking into the facts. And again, these guys are all up in arms. All these articles write the same thing over and over and over. But hey, at least it's making the news. We just need to read between the lines. We need to find out kind of their next plan. When someone comes out and announces it, what are they going? What are they doing? So far, they're doing a lousy job. They're not really even researching. They're not even really looking into credible people asking having interviews so we kind of see this but uh, let's continue reading and see what happens because i'll tell you sounds like katie is a little bit concerned oh astrophysics katie i don't know if anyone knows who she is but maybe we can get in contact with her and just maybe calm her down and say it's okay katie it's okay it's all right don't worry you're gonna be okay and chris i don't know where he's at but hey let's go is this a joke i hope so neil degrasse tyson who hosted the recent cosmos remake to try and dispel such scientific ignorance Oh, those people, they're so ignorant. They don't know science. Only I do. I am the Mr. N-D-T. Listen to me. He replied all the same, noting that Irving should stay away from jobs that require understanding of the natural world. Of course, just, just keep these people, you know, in maybe a concentration camp, maybe a FEMA camp. Maybe we need to devise an area called, you know, science denier camps, and we'll put them all in there where they can't affect anyone else because this is dangerous. So let's segregate these people and keep them away from real jobs that, you know, about the real world. <laughs> understanding of the natural world, he said. The weird affair has played out like a sideshow next to the main stage political circus, an unsettling reminder of Carl Sagan's, sorry, Carl Sagan's prediction in his last book, The Demon Hunted World, that Americans would soon find their critical facilities in decline, unable to distinguish between what feels good and what's true. Sagan devoted much of his life to countering anti-science trends with warmth and enthusiasm, parking himself repeatedly, arguably, compulsively in front of TV cameras, writes Joel Archibach at, at Smithsonian. We most remember him for his original 1980 Cosmos miniseries, his most public role as a gatekeeper of scientific credibility. Wow, look at that. Just they admit it right there. Good old Sagan. Hey, Carl, can uh, you please be the gatekeeper for scientific credibility? Just kind of contain it. Yeah, sure. Let's let's go with that. Interesting that they put gatekeeper of scientific credibility. But let's continue on. 
I think Sagan might have chaffed at the description. He wanted to be, he wanted to open the gates and let the public into scientific inquiry. He charitably listened to unscientific theories and patiently took the time to explain their flaws. Of course, how did Carl explain their flaws? Let's go in to see. In the very first episode of Cosmos, Sagan addressed the flat earthers indirectly by explaining how Aristophanes, a Libyan Greek scholar and chief librarian at the Library of Alexandria, discovered over 2,000 years ago that the earth is a sphere. Given the geographer, mathematician, poet, historian, and astronomer's incredible list of accomplishments, a system of latitude and longitude, a map of the world, a system for finding prime numbers, this may not even rank as the highest achievement. Well, first of all, we got a major problem with all the maps of the world. So your little longitude and latitude and devising your maps of the world have major problems. But let's go into this because we get into in the cosmos clip above which i couldn't find on this article so i pulled up what our well what uh, video they're talking about sagan explains aristophanes scientific method how he did it and what he did so let's listen to this shall we but eratosthenes was a scientist and his contemplation of these homely matters changed the world in a way made the world. He did. He changed the world. Because Eratosthenes had the presence of mind to experiment, to actually ask whether back here near Alexandria, a stick cast a shadow oh. near noon on June the 21st. Oh, I see. It okay. Turns out, sticks do. Oh, sticks do. All right. I'm intrigued. An overly skeptical person might have said that the report from Syene was in error, but it's an absolutely straightforward observation why would anyone lie on such a trivial matter? Oh, of course. Why lie? Then he's asked himself how it could be that at the same moment, a stick in Syene would cast no shadow, and a stick in Alexandria, 800 kilometers to the north, would cast a very definite shadow. Oh, this should be good. Here's a map oh. of ancient Egypt. I've inserted two sticks. Obelisks. Obelisks. Ooh. Lovely. In Alexandria, and one down here in Syene. Mm. Now, if at a certain moment each stick casts no shadow, no shadow at all, that's perfectly easy to understand, provided the Earth is flat. If the shadow at Syene is at a certain length, and the shadow at Alexandria is the same length, that also makes sense on a flat Earth. But how could it be, Eratosthenes asked, that at the same instant, there was no shadow at Syene and a very substantial shadow at Alexandria. The only answer was that the surface of the Earth is curved. Ooh! But the greater the curvature, the bigger the difference oh. in the length of the shadows. Mm -hmm. The sun is so far away uh -huh. that its rays are parallel when they reach the Earth. Okay. Sticks at different angles to the sun's rays will cast shadows at different lengths. For the observed difference in the shadow lengths, the distance between Alexandria and Syene had to be about seven degrees along the surface of the Earth. By that I mean, if you imagine these sticks extending all the way down to the center of the Earth, they would there intersect at an angle of about seven degrees. Let's do some experiments with obelisks and let's bend the cardboard to show how much curvature there is. So if I have the understanding, this is your true experiment that proved the curvature of the earth. Can do you have any more? Do you have anything else to show us? Anything in the last, you know, since that time? I mean, you're saying that was what, 2000 years ago? It's a long time. Can you show me anything else? No, you can't. You say ships go over the horizon and the moon cast a shadow and this is what you got you got no science you've got basically cardboard and obelisks now we got to have red flags on any experiment we're going to use obelisks nice touch there carl but anyways i digress let's get back to the article let's continue on um again if you guys haven't looked into it there's a lot of great uh videos Aristophanes Flat Earth. Just type that in in YouTube and you'll find a lot of videos really showing you to support the fact that if you have the sun a lot closer rather than the 93 million miles away they say it is, 
if you have it a lot closer, you have the same effect. And again, I haven't done massive amounts of research on it, but there's many that has. So you just have to look into it and check out their research because like I said, this is very, very flimsy because yes, their mathematical models work when they get into curvature, you know, when they get into all these type of things. But again, the math works the same way when you take a flat earth, closer sun, and you get the same type of shadows. So again, this kind of uh, experiment that they did goes both ways. They want us to believe that the sun is 40, 40 million miles away. Oh no, actually now it's 60. Oh no, now it's 80. No, no, now it's 90. Do you understand that since that was done, I think the earth, I think the sun was very, very relatively close. It has continually changed. It's got further and further away. Therefore, to come up with that idea back then, uh, based on a closer sun, do you see how this, this is a big problem? At least we and our models will stay consistent but again, they just keep changing it. They add more millions of years or billions of miles and away they go with their evolution nonsense and with their complete Big Bang cosmology craziness that they continually cram down everyone's throats and say anyone else with any type of other theory, no, 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 there's no debate, it's settled. And again, science isn't about being settled. Science is about investigation, it's about discovery, it's about asking questions. But again, it's moved into scientism. There is no more debate. You even question us, there'll be problems. And there's been many, many people that have documented the fact that we've moved into a massive cult when it comes to scientism. You don't bow down to the masters, you won't go very far. And that's exactly what we're seeing. But anyways, let's continue on with this. No, of course the earth isn't flat. But Sagan's lesson on how one scientist from iniquity came to know that isn't an exercise in debunking, it's a journey into the movement of the solar system, into ancient scientific history, and most importantly, perhaps into the scientific method, oh perhaps, perhaps not, which does not rely on hearsay from global elites or shadowy figures, but on the tools of observation, inference, reasoning, and math. Professional scientists are not without their biases and conflicts of interest. Well, I'm glad you admitted that in your article. but. The most fundamental intellectual tools that they use are available to everyone on earth. Oh, really? Show us. Show us. Give us the tool where we can show the measured curvature of the earth or even the movement of the earth. Please, please, please show us that and we'll have no more problems. But again, they end up this article by lying and saying, oh, all the fundamental intellectual tools are available to everyone. You just have to use your brain. You're stupid if you believe any of these type of theories. Again, it's basically condescending. It's talking down to anyone that would ever, ever dare question old Carl Sagan. I mean, didn't he come up with the original cosmos? You know, it's like Neil deGrasse Tyson. He took over. You know, he basically carried the torch on. And that's exactly what we're seeing. We're seeing a bunch of gatekeepers for science. What was, what was that again? I don't know. Let's just look at that because I think that was really, really important when it came to this article because it literally said basically that he was basically set up as a gatekeeper of scientific, oh, credibility. So therefore, he will determine if you have any credibility in the scientific community, which we should be turning scientific to scientism. He's the gatekeeper of the scientism credibility. If you get along with our plan and you kind of do what you're supposed to do, then we're good to go and that's what we need to do. So guys, guys, Article after article after article, we see the same thing. We see the same lame excuses going back to thousands of years ago with Aristophanes and getting into just boats going over the horizon. It's time to seriously address this. Let's contact some of these people and say, hey, can you show us the experiment? You said at the bottom of your article, you have the tools available to everyone. Show us the measurable curvature through an experiment, please or show us the experiment where we can verify that indeed the earth is a spinning ball flying through space. Keep exposing the lies, celebrate truth, blessings all. Take care.